Shalom. This is Les Lawrence. Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank, a video version. <laughs> and uh, we have a lot to cover as usual. Let's get started with prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask for your guidance by your Holy Spirit as we talk about the events that are going on in, in the world and particularly in Israel. And I pray that you would give us your uh, your view of things. That's what we want to see. Not only a biblical, but a godly worldview. Thank you, Father. In the name of your Son, Yeshua ben Yehovah, Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. Well, it's a very, very busy time, of course, uh, in the United States. Uh, we're having elections this year. For those of you out of the country, it's not as important, maybe, but for uh, everybody in this country, I just urge you and uh, appeal to you, make sure you vote Tuesday. Early voting is finished in many places, but Tuesday, you can still vote, and it's very important that we uh properly respond uh, to, as a God would lead us to vote. Um, I have a list of conservative judges that are on the ballot, eight of them in North Carolina. If anybody wants to uh, respond, email me and I'll give you a, a copy of those particular judges. Um, but anyway, let's get on into the news. As usual, I start with my blog. It's elishavision.wordpress.com and uh, it's my weekly commentary once or twice a week. I put up a blog and uh, make comments. The last one I put up is actually a cartoon of my favorite Israeli cartoonist, Yaakov Kirshen. And uh, this one is called King Solomon and His Advisor. And he says, the Jewish state has done the impossible. We have united the nations of the world. And the King uh, Solomon answers, he says, and the bad news? And his advisor says, we've invited them, but they're united against us. <laughs> They say they are united, but they're against us. Well, uh, I like uh, Yaakov Kirshen's uh, comment on that. He said, uh, yikes, according to biblical prophecy, in the latter days, all the nations will come against Israel because of Jerusalem. And I said, he's right, of course, as repeated many times in the Bible. Here's just one. I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment, and I will uh, with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. That's Joel 3, 2. And I encourage you to, to read my blog and keep up to date on, on uh, different issues that I comment on in there. Um, all right, well, let's start uh, this week with uh, news in Jerusalem about uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu okays 1,000 new homes in Jerusalem. And... Uh, and 400 of those housing units are in a, a suburb of Jerusalem called Har Homa, or in a neighborhood, I should say, of Jerusalem called Har Homa. It's one that's been on uh, the prayer list for Doreen and I for many years since we uh, signed up to pray for uh, a, a particular city, and it happened to be Har Homa, uh, neighborhood of Jerusalem, probably, I don't know, I guess 10, 12 years ago with the Christians uh, uh, for Israel. Uh, uh, ministry. And anyway, we've been praying for our Oma, but uh, that's one of the areas. And another one in Ramat Shlomo. But uh, this just that simple announcement of building new homes has created a worldwide backlash uh, that Israel has always uh, condemned. The world condemns Israel when they build houses more than they condemn Hamas or the Palestinian Authority for terrorist actions. Uh, the, there's a kind of a mini intifada going on in Jerusalem the last week or so, and and uh, that doesn't get the condemnation of the world as much as Israel building houses in their capital city. Uh, so it's just an amazing uh, double standard. In fact, uh, the Times of Israel reported that the U.S. unequivocally opposed to East Jerusalem construction. State Department says building over the Green Line is incompatible with Israel's stated desire to live in a peaceful society. And I find that to be... Uh, it's just so amazing that the, that the United States and other nations think that they can tell Israel where they can build houses for their people. Uh, that's not true in any other country. Uh, and uh, it's just very tragic. Well, all right, let's move on. <laughs> um, as a result of this, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, calls for a Jerusalem Intifada. And he did it very similar to the way Yasser Arafat did back in the year 2000 which actually did respond in it or re result in a great uh, and terrible intifada that had suicide bombers and all kinds of things. In the meantime, of course, Israel has built a wall in parts of the area and uh, a fence and others. 
to uh, to be able to keep out suicide bombers. Uh, people can go in and out through those uh, on both sides of the wall, but just they can't slip in uh, as they could before. So, but anyway, uh, what kind of a peace uh, <laughs> partner is Abbas if he's calling for a Jerusalem intifada because Israel builds houses? And then uh, probably a bigger event this week in Jerusalem was that a um, Temple Mount advocate, uh, Yehuda Glick, was shot in Jerusalem. This is a man that has uh, spoken uh, for years that Israel ought to have more, Jews ought to have more freedom to pray on the Temple Mount. Um, I think we've talked about this before, and you know that, that Jews can go onto the Temple Mount and Christians can go up there. But if we ever uh, actually would pray, not even kneeling, but if we just would stop and bow your head, the police will immediately escort you out right off the Temple Mount. And uh, and they, they're they doing that, trying to be sensitive, they say, to the uh, Muslim sensitivities, because the Muslims say that's their holy ground and nobody else can pray there. Really, they're trying to make it kind of like Mecca, where in Mecca, no infidel can even enter the area. Uh, that's actually what the Muslims are demanding for the Temple Mount, which, of course, is where Solomon's temple stood in uh, and, of course, Herod's temple in uh, 2,000 years ago, the time of Jesus. So uh, it's a very, very uh, hot uh, subject. And, and there's been uh, Molotov cocktails and stone throwing attacks. And even there's even gunfire between Hamas and uh, Palestinian Authority supporters uh, around the area of Jerusalem over this issue. And uh, But this advocate who's, who's been speaking out for it, he goes up there and, and uh, intentionally uh, tries to establish that Jews have a right to go up there, and he's well known, uh, and and he was shot this week. He he will survive and recover. Uh, it's now reported, but a terrorist deliberately targets leading advocate for Jewish Temple Mount rights, leaving um, Yahuda Glick uh, seriously injured. And then uh, uh, there's another report that uh, hundreds uh, gather and pray in Jerusalem for Yehuda Glick's recovery. And uh, the son of the gunned down prayer rights activist gives a moving prayer. And uh, all of this is actually a good thing because it brings this, this, uh, this debate kind of about into the public. It's been going on, but it kind of been under wraps, kept in, in not too much news. Uh, so this brings it out and makes it a real issue because Israel proclaims that they have freedom of religion. But that's actually uh, not allowed on the Temple Mount. There's not freedom of religion on that 32-acre plot of ground where uh, John Solomon's temple once stood. And uh, there's a story in Yahoo News about Jerusalem on edge after police kill Palestinian gunmen. Just the next day or so, they had caught up with the man who shot you, Glick, and, uh, and uh, the and the the uh, ensuing uh, uh, attempt to arrest him, uh, he ended up being shot and killed. And uh, then that costs, then the next step of phase as this is all going on is there was a cabinet meeting over this issue and and it became a very stormy cabinet meeting uh and uh, ministers of the knesset uh, rip into the internal security minister police commissioner for glick shooting and violence in jerusalem and uh, the incitement that's been going on by abbas the palestinians and hamas of course everybody uh all the muslims are really trying to stir it up and create uh, a real battle over it Make it a trigger point, a flashpoint. Israel's trying to avoid that, of course. Uh, and not only did Abbas uh, earlier uh, call for an intifada in Jerusalem before the shooting, after the shooting, instead of trying to calm things down, the Palestinian Authority calls the assassin terrorist a hero defending freedom. Uh, and uh, he, this uh, official in the Palestinian Authority lauds the shooter of the prayer rights activist uh, and details the terrorist history of arrest and assault of prison guards and makes him a hero. And uh, and it just gets crazier and crazier there. Uh, Breitbart News has a story that's interesting as well, uh, where uh, as a result of this, uh, what the cabinet decided to do temporarily was close the Temple Mount to everybody. Uh, it was only about a day or day and a half. I think it happened on Wednesday. It was closed all day Thursday. And then Friday it was reopened for uh, only Muslim men over the age of 50 trying to stop the young young ones that work for Hamas, actually on Hamas's payroll, who are 
paid to throw rocks and, and create uh, riots. And uh, so it was temporarily closed. And how did uh, Mahmoud Abbas <laughs> respond to that? He said, the closure of Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa mosque, mosque site is a declaration of war. That's what you call overreacting. And, uh, and then it continues to escalate. And, uh, and also, let's see, I think this was uh, yesterday, or uh, maybe it was Friday. I guess it was Friday. Uh, a Jordanian uh, minister of their parliament blames Netanyahu for not keeping his promise of allowing discriminatory status quo on the Temple Mount and uh, threatens to revoke the peace treaty of, between Jordan and Israel over the Temple Mount. Now that's quite important because uh, as we've talked about, you know, in the context of our discussions over a couple of years now about Jerusalem and Israel and the Psalm 83 war, the countries immediately surrounding Jerusalem are listed in Psalm 83. They will attack Jerusalem together one more time trying to destroy Israel and wipe out the name of Israel from history. And uh, one of the problems, uh, one of the things blocking that has been King Abdullah of Jordan has been friendly to the United States and to Israel, and they have a peace treaty. Well, now there's building pressure on him to, to actually break the peace treaty with Israel. And if they do that, the Psalm 83 war is not far after. In fact, it could happen before they actually make that announcement, if things really get out of hand. And that seems to be what's happening. Well, as a result of all this, the Arab League uh, met, the meeting of all the Arab countries, uh, to, held an emergency meeting on Jerusalem. And uh, and the result of that meeting uh, was that the Arab League ended up uh, deciding uh, to, uh, excuse me, lost my place. <laughs> uh, they met and, and they decided to condemn Israel and condemn uh, Jerusalem for, for what they had done. And uh, so uh, they continue, in other words, to stir the pot. Uh, meanwhile, as it continued to develop, the police chief, when they reopened the Temple Mount, said it will stay open to Jews. Jews and Christians can go up there, but the status quo is maintained. They're not allowed to pray there. Um, and then uh, just to show you how hard it is to balance everything in Israel, one of Israel's uh, biggest newspapers and its most left-leaning newspaper, ha, it's called Haaretz, Haaretz, the land, uh, had a cartoon in the paper that could have been taken right out of uh, out of uh, the Muslim propaganda. It's a picture of an airplane with Israel printed on the side, and Netanyahu as the pilot, a little cartoon figure of Netanyahu flying an airplane into one of the twin towers in New York City. Uh, what a ridiculous analogy! And that's because the left is really upset with with uh, Netanyahu for. Uh, allowing the building in Jerusalem. So even within Israel and among the Israelis, you have real opposition uh, to uh, to the purposes of God because God says the land is, is not to be divided and they're not to be making this kind of a peace treaty and a, uh, creating a new state for Palestinians. Uh, all right. Uh, so then getting into the international range, uh, Sweden becomes the first country in Europe to recognize a Palestinian state. And uh, as and they actually voted on that. And right, you know, I remember I mentioned last week, I think it was that Great Britain's parliament voted that way, but it was just a recommendation, not an actual official position. But Sweden actually made it official. And uh, Israel... Uh, immediately withdrew their envoy to Sweden, uh, at least temporarily. And uh, that's pretty serious because uh, what that does is is jeopardize the peace talks because the, the peace talks are based on a UN resolution. I think it's 242 that says that the, uh, the ceasefire lines of 1949 and 67, uh, which are not borders, but are just ceasefire lines, uh, and this and all all of the conflicts that Israel's had with their Arab neighbors it is to be settled by mutual agreement in negotiations. And now the Palestinian Authority has been asking for countries and for the UN to recognize the Palestinians as a state and without without Israel uh, agreeing to anything. And uh, and it's not going to fly. And yet uh, it's becoming kind of a cause uh, cause celeb in. Uh, especially in Europe, and we need to pray that God will 
bring his truth and his will into into play. Well, I want to make a few comments about some of the other things going on. Probably over above all of this, it's kind of been zeroing in on things incident in Israel, but uh, the big picture is still there of uh, the U.S. And, and the P5 plus one trying to make an agreement with Iran about their nuclear program. Of course, Iran has been uh, playing both sides. They, they come to the negotiations, but they continue working towards uh, towards the bomb. And I, I mentioned uh, something that was exposed just last week when, when they found that they were actually creating nuclear triggers in a, a facility at Parchin in Iran that was uh, mysteriously blown up, sabotaged. Well, anyway, uh, an official in Iran this week said, quote, we aim to destroy the U.S. Navy forces in the Gulf. Now, that's kind of a big a bit of bravado, but still, that's stated by an official in Iran right while they're in negotiations, to, supposedly, uh, to, to agree to not continue building a bomb. Well, uh, they speak out of both sides of their mouth. Let's leave it there. Uh, in Turkey, uh, which I believe is going to be the real center of the Islamic world uh, after the Psalm 83 war. Uh, in Turkey, there's a Pew poll that says Israel is the most hated country in Turkey. 86% of responders in this Pew poll in, is in Turkey have an unfavorable opinion of Israel, while only 2% view it positively. And uh, so I thought that was uh, just something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, if you think Turkey is a friend of the West, you're, you're sadly mistaken. Um, here's some good news. The U.S., in, in spite of everything else, the U.S. has agreed to sell Israel uh, another squadron of F-35 stealth jets. Uh, I believe the number of jets is 19, as I read this article, 19 jets that the U.S. will be selling to Israel, and uh, I'm thankful for that. Uh, just a little update on a story we talked about quite a while ago, the soda stream plant in uh in the edge of Jerusalem, in greater Jerusalem, but it's over the green line, as they say, in what's called the West Bank. But they were actually employing uh, uh, 300, excuse me, 500 Palestinians uh, who are part of the Palestinian Authority and 450 Arab Israelis uh, who are citizens of Israel and 350 Israeli Jews all on this one plant with the same salaries, the same benefits and everything. But uh, there was a worldwide boycott of SodaStream because of it. Uh, I think uh, the actress Scarlett Johansson got involved in it because she was doing an ad for them and so forth. And uh, and now, after it's been a year or so, but now SodaStream has actually announced they're closing that plant and they're going to build a new one in Israel down in the Negev. So uh, that was a terrible, terrible uh, misguided boycott against them because it actually costs... Um, almost 900 jobs for uh, Arabs, uh, Israelis, and Palestinians. Hmm. Well, um, just a little fun story here in Israel Today magazine. It says, Tel Aviv named one of the world's best culinary locations. <laughs> and uh, it's a story about uh, ranking up, with, up there with other major European cities like Copenhagen and Florence. And uh, so giving uh, high... high uh, High marks to the uh, food in Israel. I have to. I've never eaten in the fancy restaurants, but I know that in general I love the food in Israel. Whenever we go there, looking forward to going back in uh, in February. Um, and then uh, there's a case going before the, the Supreme Court of the United States uh, tomorrow, Monday. Uh, the Supreme Court is actually going to consider a case that's been pending uh, for 12 years uh, about a, an American citizen. A boy was born 12 years ago uh, in Jerusalem to his American citizen parents who had just immigrated to Israel. But his passport, the United States has refused to let them say, put on his passport, his American passport, uh, Jerusalem, Israel. They don't allow the word Israel to be on his passport because it's disputed, uh, even though the fact that it's the capital of Israel is, is, is historically true for 3,000 years. So anyway, the U.S. Supreme Court is hearing that tomorrow. We might be in prayer that uh, that they'll rule uh, in common sense and let let people born in Jerusalem have Jerusalem, Israel on their passports. Um, there's an interesting article also, um, uh, just a quick thing as I close here, about Obama's former pastor. Uh, I'm sure you'll remember 
uh, Jeremiah Wright, and uh, he's recently uh, come out saying that he helped Obama accept Christianity without having to renounce Islam. Uh, interesting, just to kind of throw that into the mix, uh, some of the rumors and things that we've heard, but this is actually Jeremiah Wright talking about his personal relationship. It was like a father-son relationship with Obama and that uh, he actually paved the way for Obama to, to uh, somehow accept Christianity without accepting Islam. Of course, we know that they're incompatible because the God of Islam isn't a father and he doesn't have a son and the Jesus of the Quran didn't die and so forth. Uh, so it's a different, uh, a different God, a different uh, message, uh, because the God of Israel uh, is a father, has a son who is the Messiah, and died for our sins, and rose from the dead. So anyway, uh, that's that. I guess that was an early view of, or vision of uh, what they call Chrislam, trying to combine the two religions. Uh, and then one final uh, story I want to just mention quickly out of um, Breitbart News, uh, a, a poll uh, in Israel says that the Israeli perception of Obama plummets, and that was just uh, released on Friday, by a better than three to one margin, Israelis now consider U.S. President Barack Obama more pro-Palestinian than pro-Israel. What a sad commentary on our president. God have mercy on us. Well, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this uh, opportunity to talk about uh, the events of the world, but to see them in the light of biblical prophecy and, and your timing. Lord, we know that, uh, as, as I say when people ask me, is it going to get better and better or worse and worse until Jesus comes? And my answer is yes. <laughs> It'll get worse for the world, but better for believers as we follow you and, and you said you'll be with us, never leave us or forsake us. Lord, we pray for Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I thank you, Lord, that the, the uh, seasonal rains that have returned. I just pray that it will continue to rain and have abundant rains this year for Israel. And also, Lord, uh, I want to close by praying for the U.S. election. Father, I just pray that your will would be done, that, that conservative, God-fearing men and women would be elected uh, all up and down the tickets from the lowest office all the way up to the, the uh, office of Senator of the United States that are being uh, uh, that are being elected and just on Tuesday. Lord, I pray that Christians and conservatives would get out and vote and not just if we don't vote, we don't have any right to complain. So I Lord, I ask for your Holy Spirit to motivate your people to uh, stand up and, and be counted in this election. Thank you, Father God, we just commit it all to you in the name of your Son, Yeshua ben Yehovah, Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah of Israel. Thank you, Father. Amen. God bless you. Hope to see you next week. Shalom, shalom.